I'm Marissa Norcross. And I'm Dave Freund. So this must be the next page. Hey, Marissa. Hi, how's it going? It is going outstanding. Good. And it's a good thing I'm not outstanding in the rain. No, it's not raining yet, but I just saw an alert come across my phone that said severe thunderstorm watch. No way. Where I am yeah, sitting right now, it is sunny. Same here. So maybe that thunderstorm watch is somewhere else, but nonetheless, I'm still outstanding. Well. Because I get to do another podcast. Absolutely. This is our second episode of our second year, mm -hmm. so this is awesome. Mm-hmm. Yep. And today we're going we're gonna to talk about, well, last week we talked about commitment. Yes. But I have noticed there's something we haven't talked about for a while, and that's food. Food? I don't know why that is. Food. Oh. We used to talk about food routinely. I was actually Because remember, I'm one of those too. people that, yeah, I'm one of those people that lives to eat. I don't eat to live, and I'm not talking about food. So maybe we need to start thinking about, like, favorite barbecue recipes or something. Hmm. Well, that would be cool. I know you used to ask me what what was what I was cooking because I was going through a phase right. where I was cooking different things. Um, so I can share since it's summer now, and we've got um, especially if you're in our area in New York State, a lot of different um, you know salad greens and lettuce and all that is in season. Strawberries right now. are ready. Yep, strawberries. Yep. My wife, my wife just told me strawberries are ready. Yeah, they do. They they. It's that time of year, but I will say yep. that um, I've been finding some great salad recipes lately. Wow! So cool. that's kind of been my new um, what's cooking, I'd say. Okay. Uh, got a different. Now I can't let I can't let you forget because I think you were going to make your meatballs that have sweet potato. I in. know. I was Is thinking that right? about that. Yeah, I was thinking about that today <sighs> too because, um, well, as most of our listeners know, I'm quite pregnant at this point and i was just thinking i would love, yes you are i would love to make meatballs and sauce but I, it's kind of it's hot out and i don't have air conditioning so that's yeah kinda, no, don't do it now but you know what that is a good reminder that i need to do that okay so you do that and i'll have my daughter and i'll make you a gluten-free cake Ooh, yum <laughs> how's that that's great could always use cake okay <laughs> So now, as Marie Antoinette said, let them eat cake. Mm -hmm. But that's not why we're here. We're so last week we talked about, we didn't talk about food, but we did talk about commitment. So today we're going to talk about overcommitment. Um, and the title of this week's email slash blog post was, Is Overcommitment Stealing Your Productivity? Mm -hmm. And this was a lesson that, that I learned the hard way. And I'm still learning it. Is those, those that are around me a lot know that I still struggle with overcommitting and, and trying to do too much. And, 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 and that came out in some of our, in some of our emails or our, our podcast that came out in May where I, I went through a, a, where when a Dave was miserable period kind of thing because I had overcommitted. But I want to talk about an event that happened in 2006. I know that's a long time ago. Um, I was the president of Self Lock Screw Products. Um, I had probably been president for a year and a half, two years. Um, things were going actually pretty well. The company was beginning to do a nice turnaround. The team was functioning quite well. Um, and my family and I had planned every summer we go to Virginia to Eastern Mennonite University because our, our church denomination has a conference there. And I've gone almost every year since I was six years old. I think because my parents used to take me. I think in the, in, and I'm 56. So I think I've got, this, this summer will be my 48th visit to this conference. But wow. anyways. So we were ready to go. Um, the car was packed. Chores were done because we typically leave like on a Sunday morning to go to this event because it runs from Sunday evening through the following Saturday. My boys and I love cars, so we always try to go out at least for an evening to the, the Nationals car show at the fairgrounds. And I noticed as I was walking out there that I had a shortness of breath. Couldn't figure out what was going on. The next thing I noticed, I was we decided to watch the burnout competition, and the grandstands was still around back then. So I'm walking up a couple steps, the grandstands, and I'm and I have trouble getting up those steps. And I noticed that I'm getting this pain radiating down my arms from my shoulders. So then um, I didn't say anything to my kids then, my boys then. And then as we we're walking back to the car, the pain started shooting up the side of my neck. 
and I mentioned it to my boys, and of course they're they're not stupid. They're thinking these are the signs of a heart attack. So, but they, I just said, just let's just go home. So we went home, and they mentioned it to my wife, and my wife sends me across the street to the neighbor to take my blood pressure. He's an, he was an EMT. Um, he probably felt I wasn't going to do anything about it, so he called my wife as I was walking back to the house and said, take him to St. Joe's. So mm -hmm. I get to St. Joe's. Long story short, I did not have a heart attack, but I had all the symptoms of a heart attack. I ended up spending the night there. I ended up having them give me a shot in my belly of Coumadin or something, some blood thinner. Um, ran a whole bunch of tests, did a stress test. And, and the bottom line was the stress in my life was actually causing the muscles in my chest to constrict on my heart. Wow. Because I had a couple of these episodes um, where it wasn't a heart attack. It wasn't life-threatening, but clearly stress was getting the best of me. Um, I was working a lot of hours, and I just thought, well, I'll work my through. You know, I was 44 at the time. Um, 43, 44, I, you know, I don't drink much. I have a glass of wine once in a while. I don't smoke. I wasn't that overweight. Uh, this didn't make any sense to me. So I just figured, well, it's okay. I'll just keep working. Well, I didn't learn my lesson, and it came back to haunt me later on. Um, but what I was falling prey to was what uh, Michael Hyatt calls the hustle fallacy. Now, Michael Hyatt was a former CEO of Thomas Nelson, now has his own company and actually a great podcast. Um, I'm going to put a link to his new uh, podcast in our description because it's awesome. And he just did a series of of podcasts on this topic of of overcommitment and, and, and those type of things. But in that one of those podcasts and, that I was listening to and in listening to Michael talk about the hustle fallacy, it's interesting that when we, so I was working, I was working long days. You asked me before we started recording, mm -hmm. you know, how many hours and, and somewhere between 55 and 60 hours of work. However, when I left work, I never was th not thinking about work. And I had some other responsibilities in my church denomination that I mentioned to you before we started recording that on one 11 week period, I was traveling nine weeks. So I would leave work, travel, maybe I'd get out a little early on a Friday, travel, let's say to Ohio, arrive there at 10 at night, have meetings all day Saturday, uh, meetings, you know, some meetings on Sunday, maybe preach a sermon on Sunday morning, get in the car in the afternoon, head back home, get home between eight and 10 at night, and then the next morning at 6.30, 6.45, I'm back in the plant. Wow. I did that week after week after week after week after week. And mm -hmm. it has a toll on you. Mm -hmm. And what I didn't realize was, so what it did for me was um, I wasn't getting the chest pains and, the, and the, the, the stuff that I had earlier. It drove me into a burnout where I was miserable. My family didn't want to be around me. The people at work didn't want to be around me, and I wasn't able to work through the problems. I wasn't thinking clearly. I wasn't sleeping well, uh, and literally I was burning out. And, and it's interesting. One of the things that Michael Hyatt identified is that there really is this point where we lose our productivity the longer we work, and it is somewhere around the 10-hour-a-day point where our productivity dramatically falls off. Mm -hmm. Our cognitive thinking dramatically ends. We, you know, so the point is we need to get rest. We need this time to rejuvenate. And overcommitment steals your productivity. So I ask the question of people, so do you track how many hours you work? Do you value the point that you're the first one in and the last one out? And if the answer to that question is yes, there's a problem because you're measuring the wrong thing. Right. And you're measuring hours, not productivity. And I know you've even, you know, not only are, are saying this from your own experience, but you found some statistics that I'm hoping that you'll share because this isn't just us telling you that you're losing productivity, but the, the proof is in the pudding here, right? Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, there's an organization called the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development. So basically, they are surveying 
the economically developed or um, you know the developed nations of the world. So, for instance, in Greece, the average worker works 2,000 hours per year. So if you think about that, if there's 52 weeks, that's 2,080 hours at 40 hours a week. So perhaps they're, they're taking out the normal holidays that would take place in a country um, because we typically get somewhere between 8 and 11 holidays in, in our companies here. So let's say it's 50 weeks. They're working a 40-hour work week. Interesting thing is that the Germans, and trust me, work, having worked for a European company, I worked for a Swiss company for eight years, they have a lot more holidays than we do. Mm -hmm. But even in Germany, the Germans only worked 1,400 hours in a year. So that's 600 hours less than the Greeks, but they were 70% more productive. That's amazing. So what, the, so what they're saying is they were working less but accomplishing more. Mm -hmm. and, and one of the things that I found, uh, so this isn't a statistic I found, this is something that I, that I realized at, at SelfLock and in other companies where I managed. If you, I, so let's say, and companies typically put hourly people on overtime, the hourly workers love it because they get time and a half. But I, really, I noticed that after I had my folks working overtime for more than, so let's say they were working 50 hours a week. At the beginning of putting them on overtime, I got 50 hours worth of productivity. But over time, I got less mm -hmm. and less mm -hmm. because they found a way. And it wasn't that they were trying to be lazy. It's just they get worn out. And, and apparently, so one, one of the things the statistics Michael Hyatt gave was he said that in 50 hours, we only yield 37 hours of productivity. And we get to 55 hours, our productivity for that week drops to 30 hours. So much wasted time. So the more, it is. Yeah. It's, it's unbelievable what happens. So then we have to ask ourselves, so wait a minute, where did, where did the wasted, where did all the time go? So in another st survey that I found, this was according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, the average American works 8.8 .8 hours a day. Now, we should clarify mm -hmm. that. They are at work 8.8 .8 hours of the day. So they surveyed 2,000 full-time mm -hmm. office workers, which was staggering because what they found was one hour and five minutes of the day, these employees were spending reading news websites. Wow. 40, 44 minutes in their day was checking social media. 40 minutes in their day was discussing non-work related things with other coworkers. <laughs> this one was telling. 26 <laughs> minutes in the day, they were looking for new jobs. Hello, why not just try to make the best of the one you have rather than look for a new one? <clears throat> 23 minutes on smoke breaks. 18 minutes making calls to partners or friends. 17 minutes making hot drinks. So just get them a cure. It's a lot quicker. Um, <laughs> Texting or instant messaging, 14 minutes. Eating snacks, only eight minutes. I mean, come on. I think I I'm eating how snacks could you check more social... than eight minutes. <laughs> I am, yeah. but I'm thinking you're spending 45 minutes checking social media. Take some of that and eat. You know, go to lunch or something. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Making food in the office, seven minutes. So the reality was they're not working. Right. I think if my math is spending correct, all this that's time like there. over four hours right there. Yeah, I think it was three point something hours was the actual production time or productivity time mm -hmm. that these workers had. So of the eight point hour, Hello, eight point eight hour day, yeah. they're working less. Right. They're productive less than half of that. Right. So and mm -hmm. so what what typically happens when 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 uh, employers see that they begin to tighten the screws, they begin to find ways to discipline or make rules. None of them work. So the key here is, now again, I'm using some extremes, and I realize that, but we are more productive when we make sure that we take time for good breaks, vacations, you know, um, you're going you're gonna to stay at the office till 7 or 8 at night. I guarantee you, you are not that productive, and you are more prone to make mistakes. So what are we short? So you're shorting something. Um... Uh, when Michael Hyatt did, he did a talk at LeaderCast 
um, which is very similar to the Live to Lead that the John Maxwell team does. It, it actually uh, was around before Live to Lead. But he, uh, and there will be, I'll put the link again, the link in, in our show notes to Michael's uh, podcast. And one of those is really his talk at, at LeaderCast. And, and he really talks about leaders needing to take care of themselves and the importance of not overworking. Because he, he said, where are, you, where are you shortchanging yourself? You know, somebody's losing. And, and he had this great way of putting it. And I, and I want to find where I had that in my notes. Maybe I can, maybe I can't. Um, he calls it self-care. And, and, and so the reality is people say, well, you know what? I want to be successful. And, and so do you want to be successful in one area of your life or more than one area of your life? You could be really, really successful in your business career and completely destroy your personal life. Mm -hmm. He references Elon Musk. Yeah. And this was crazy. You know, I shared my notes with you where in 2010 interview with Elon Musk, Elon Musk said, you need to work 80 to 100 hours a week to be successful. His first wife, that tells us something, <laughs> or his ex-wife, said he was obsessed by work. And he said that he could do even he could even email with his kids around. Like when he's with his kids, he could actually be emailing and it didn't affect anybody. Wrong. It affected everybody. He sleeps in his Tesla factory. He drank so much caffeine that he started losing his peripheral vision. Wow. And I think about so how many, you know, young managers, you know, people that are trying to win big at work type of thing are pounding down energy drinks pounding down coffee just trying to find a way to stay engaged to to to, to win so to speak at work um they're you know they're not resting um I, I had some notes and i don't know where they are now but you know that if we if we're sleeping only five hours a week after the fifth night we begin to show signs uh, pre-diabetic signs mm -hmm. and we our cognitive abilities can be almost to the can reduce to almost the point of somebody who's intoxicated. Wow. That's just from a lack of sleep. And I think what we're really trying so, to say here is it's not that we should be saying, "Oh, well, if I'm only productive half this time anyways, I should only have to work for 5 hours a day." Um I think what we're really right. trying to say is that you know, if your work if your work day is the standard, you know, say 8 hours, a day that a lot of people, you know, have um, in America, then how to make the most of those eight hours so that you are exactly both being as productive as possible at work, not active. We're not talking about activity. We're talking about productivity. But then how can you also be taking care of yourself? And so I think we've got, you know, some good ways to share to help do that. Um, and so I was hoping we could jump to some of those. And we've talked about before sure. um, practicing mindfulness and meditation. Um, that's something yes. that you can start during your day. Um, but I think there are some other things that, that you can do during your day, such as, you know, take those scheduled breaks. Leave, right. leave the office for lunch. Even if it's just to go to the parking lot, sit in your car and read or listen to a podcast or um, do something that is not work, that is not checking your email. Sure. Eat away. Go to work. From, uh, go for a walk. Go for a walk. Yes. Yeah. Um, you know, eat away from your desk. Don't sit at lunch or don't eat your lunch sitting at your desk. Um, these are, right. you know, there's, I know you've got plenty of ideas, but those are just some things that I am immediately thinking of that I know contribute to this this loss of productivity and a loss of self-care exactly and and so um the the first one that i really think we need to we need to focus on is is the piece of rest mm -hmm. rest is critical for us um a nap can give you 40 percent improvement in creativity now sorry i'm not a person that can take a nap midday um 
some people can and what happens is that they you know they can fall asleep and and wake up quick michael hyatt said that once he he went through a crisis similar to mine where he was having he thought they were heart attacks but they were panic attacks mm -hmm. and what he actually started doing was taking a midday nap in his office mm -hmm. like 20 minutes yep um because that gives your brain a chance to reset uh what happens is after we take a rest or when we are resting our brain becomes better at problem solving because um, this was a University of, of California at San Diego School of Medicine um, that talks about when we are in REM sleep, our brain is actually reconnecting synapses and 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 and, and develop. And again, I'm not a neuro expert at all, but our brain is taking all of the things that we've been exposed to since the last rest and putting it together and storing it where it needs to be. Mm -hmm. So if we're not getting that rest, we're missing that. So the, the big, the first thing you need to do is you need to rest. And if you do any, you know, all the searches that you, cause I looked at a bunch of them, you need between seven and eight hours of rest for an adult per night. Now you're going to get a lot less. Okay, than and this. some people know they need more. I mean, I know that I, so I actually need more than that. Um, yeah. You know, and that's the thing is, you know, once you start practicing this, you'll figure out what that yeah. magic number is. You'll figure is out what you, you need. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, right. So that's, that's the most important thing too, is that you're getting that sleep at night because that's when you go into the REM sleep. You're, you know, you're not going to hit exactly. that in a 15, 20 minute nap, but those 15 and 20 minute right. naps are great. And I know you said, you know, you're not one who can do that, which is fine. It is hard for some people, but what you could do is, you know, use a meditation app and just exactly. use that as rest time. I mean, I, I've even started doing right. that with, with my daughter. I mean, she naps, she takes naps. So we do, she does um, rest time now where she is alone. Awesome. She's alone um, in her yep. room and she, she reads, well, you know, she's two. So she, she sure. looks at her book. She's looking at pictures. And she does. Yeah. And I've noticed her creativity and just about doing this for about a week now her creativity is through the roof. Isn't that amazing? Mm -hmm. With a two-year-old. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know. So think of what the, I can you know, do for someone, you know, our age. Yeah, well, your well, age, our, my, there's my a difference age, between forgetting half the things. <laughs> there's a lot of years difference between us. <laughs> but yeah, that, that resting. And another uh, thing that I heard, so I, I had watched a, a TED Talk from um, a doctor that deals with, that did a lot of brain studies and sleep studies. And one of the things she said was her husband is someone who clearly can't just nap. He wakes up groggy, which is me. I wake up groggy like a kid that didn't get a nap kind of mm -hmm. thing. Um, she said, but what's good for her husband is just to do a change of pace thinking. Like the mindfulness is great. Um, a walk. Um, a Sudoku think puzzle. Think about, <laughs> yeah, something to take your, what we need to yeah. do is we need to have that break from our focus concentration on work. And it literally allows our brain to rest a bit. So that first one, because we have this myth that we can manage time. You can't manage time. You can only manage your energy. Mm -hmm. So make sure you get enough rest. Make sure you eat. Make sure you eat right. Um, caffeinated drinks are not helping you. You only think they're helping you. Right. You know, they, they, now I'm not saying you give up your soda and your caffeine. I mean, I love my coffee in the morning. I love the taste of my coffee in the morning. Um, but don't use that as a stimulant to keep you going through the day. Mm -hmm. Eat the right things, you know, and, and there's certain foods. And again, your mom could do a much better job than I can on this. But, you know, don't eat a bunch of carbs that are going to put you to sleep. Mm -hmm. And don't skip meals. People that think they can skip breakfast and skip lunch and just grab a snack, you can't. Yeah. Um, I, had, I had a scenario just today where, where I... Uh, I had some, I was dealing with a struggle with a coaching client. So I really, I just didn't have an appetite when noon came around, but I have a can of peanuts in my drawer and I grabbed a couple handfuls of peanuts just to get some protein into my system till I could clear my head, get away from work. And then when I came home, um, I ate something a little bit better, but so the, the, the eating part is clear. Um, you know, exercise our brains begin to function better when we exercise as well. So these are just all those things. We already know it. We know that we need to take care of ourselves. We have to commit to doing it. 
uh, one of the one of the other pieces of advice that Michael Hyatt was giving: set hard boundaries around your workday and your weekends. I'm so glad you're bringing that up because if you weren't going to, I was going to. Yeah, and and yeah. for me, this is hard. And and so when is it hard? It's hard when you love what you do, mm-hmm. because if I'm not fully present for my family, when I get home at five thirty or six o'clock at night, shame on me. Right. And what Michael had to say was he loves reading leadership books, just like I do. But he said, I stopped reading them on the weekends Mm -hmm. because my brain needed to recharge. Mm -hmm. So he says, I do things with hobbies. He's learned, he's actually, his wife was quite an artist and paints. He said, I took up painting just as a way to rejuvenate his, his mind. Um, And it's interesting. You'll love this one. He takes a one month sabbatical every year. Wow. And he said that if he looks back to his days, even when he started as the CEO of Thomas Nelson, when he realized the danger of him pushing so hard, which was actually before he became CEO of Thomas Nelson, once he changed his work habits, once he rested, once he guarded his evenings and his weekends, now there's always exceptions, but generally speaking, once he began to exercise and eat right, he said, my career took off. I was more productive. He was more successful, and his success isn't just in his business world. His marriage is stronger. He has great relationships with his kids. The company that he started five or six years ago, go um, Michael Hyatt and Company, was I think Inc. Magazine rated it was one of the top 100 fastest growing companies in the country. And this was another interesting thing. They, if you work for them as an employee, at, on your third work anniversary you're eligible to begin taking one month off per year. Wow. So he takes a, a whole consecutive month, like a su- true sabbatical. A whole month. Mm-hmm. Yep, a full sabbatical, no emails. And when he says when you're on that sabbatical, don't be thinking about ideas for work. Mm-hmm. He said, keep your mind resting because when you come back, you have so much more energy, so many more ideas. Now, I can't do that. You know, um, but you can organi- try. You can do your, you know, you do your best. <laughs> <laughs> our organization isn't one where we could make that happen at this point. Um, no. Maybe someday I'll be able to. But I mean, I, I took a um, a two week vacation last year, and I right. and I did. Um, I took the email off my phone, to- totally yep. removed the account from my phone. I did not travel with a computer. Um, awesome, and. You know, we were out of town uh, as a family visiting my mother and father-in-law and my sister and brother-in-law for their their wedding. And I I didn't for two weeks. So I'm halfway there. That's great. And it, it was feel? amazing. Oh, oh, wonderful. So great. And I, I ever since then, all of my vacations, um, I, I take the email off my phone. I, you know, I do check in. So I... I, yep. Well, I didn't bring my computer. I was traveling with um, someone who did have a computer on my most recent vacation. And so I was gone for almost two weeks again. So I think I checked in once or twice just to make sure there yep. wasn't anything um, really important that I needed to forward to the person who was covering for me um, or, yep. or or something really urgent. But other than that, we've, we said it before, if someone needs to reach you really urgently, they will they will call. Um, exactly. And that was exactly They'll find the a way to get they, you. They will find a way. They, yep. will, they will send a courier pigeon um, and, right. and you will be found. But yeah, and now I've even, I on weekends, I've found that, um, and sometimes even during the week on, on nights, I'm feeling too connected and too um, overwhelmed. So I've turned my email off before. And it's, it's really not That's great. Very rarely anything super important that comes through, but it's the distraction. Um, sure, sure. And, and so I think that that's really important if you can do that, even if it's just for a day. Um, I know right. people say, oh, you're crazy. I could never do that. But, um, you know. Start small. Imagine if you, you dropped your phone in the ocean and it was gone. I mean, like. Yeah. It, and you know what? Life for folks that didn't grow up like this. Yeah. We never used to have them. Mm-hmm. I remember my first cell phone. Yeah. You used to have to, I remember when you had to go to pay phones. Mm-hmm. Yes, there were phones you had to put. I remember when pay phones were 10 cents. Yeah. My dad, my dad always like had a, a pager. 
I yeah, that was <laughs> that came a beeper. Yep. Uh-huh. I, I remember when I had to wear a beeper once for a job. Uh-huh. So the the point is, if you overcommit, you're going to be less productive. Uh-huh. Take the time off. Take your vacations. Take you know, go home. Have dinner with your family. You will not regret it. You get one chance mm-hmm. in this life. Don't mess it up. Yeah. And enjoy it. You know, I, I want to be successful in what I do. I, I want to have a positive impact in a lot of people's lives. So for me to do that, I have to be healthy. I have to be mentally sharp. Um, but I also want my, you know, it's, it's one of the things John Maxwell said when he said his goal in life is to have those that know him the best, love him and respect him the most. Mm -hmm. What a great goal. Mm -hmm. Because if I'm the type of person where my family can love and respect me the most, because they know me the best, then I'm a person that's really going to be able to make a difference in the lives of those around me. And as like Michael Hyatt has shown, it will work out to be financial success for his organization as well. So don't overcommit. You might end up at St. Joe's thinking yeah. you have a heart attack. Mm-hmm. And clearly, you're you're not going to be creative. You want to be creative? Take time off. Go back and listen to the episode about the daydreaming one. Mm-hmm. That's what happens when you take time off. Yeah. So, wow. That This podcast went quick. Yeah, we probably could have talked for a lot longer on this topic. but We probably could. It's a good thing I looked down. I'm, we're already <laughs> at the end of our time slot. I know. So. Wow. All right. So, plans for the weekend? Plans for the weekend? Um, nothing yet. Okay. Not, not too much. I think we're going to have some kind of a picnic at my house on Sunday evening because it, I think it's going to be my nephew and his wife's last weekend here up north before moving back to Florida. So, we're going to miss him. Aww. But I think we're going to do that. That's and then nice. I'm on vacation next week. Oh, ga- actually, guess what? So am I. See there, it's the week of the fourth, so that's why we're going to have to record our podcast yep. ahead of time. Yeah, right. which we're already doing. Yeah, primarily because you're going to have a baby. And <laughs> nobody wants to hear me talk by myself. So. <laughs> All right. Well, I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Thank you. You too. And a wonderful rest of your week. So with that, I'm Dave Freund. I'm Marissa Norcross. And this was the next page. <laughs>